Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new, welcome and to my returning subs. What's up you guys? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Evie Mivicho and on here we talk about all things travel. So please consider subscribing if you haven't already and let's get to it. On this vlog we're throwing it back to February when I traveled to Marsabit. We started off our journey very early at 4.30 a.m. in an attempt to beat traffic and to get to Marsabit in good time. The beautiful rising sun and a visible Mount Kenya warmed us up as we watched the towns we passed by come slowly to life. We had a quick stop at Karatina for a bathroom break and then later at the Ibeta sign in a new Kifa demonstration of the Coriolis effect in action. So, I'm going to get a little bit of a flow in the different ways. I'm going to get a little bit of a flow in the different And of course, take some photos. At around 11.30, we stopped at Anyamachoma Joint in Arches Post for an early lunch and a bathroom break. So the, the road then leads you towards the beautiful monolith Mount Ololokwe. The vast land, the beautiful well-graded road and Ololokwe as a backdrop is the perfect combination for a bomb photo. We finally got to Marsabi town at around 3.30 p.m. The town pleasantly surprised me. It is rather modern and it's much different from what many picture to be a small center in a desert. We drove straight to the Marsabi National Park, which is about 10 minutes from the city center via Ahmed Gate. The park leads to a forest and the cool, lush environment is such a welcome contrast from the otherwise hot and dry town. Our first stop was at the no longer operational Marsabi Lodge to see one of the three creatures in the park. Gulf Sokote Diko. The crater lake is very beautiful and animals frequent the area to graze and hydrate. and on to the next stop to see the new dam under construction. To get to the dam, you go on a small nature walk and enjoy the crisp fresh air in this man-made waterfall. Our next stop was that lake paradise. You can see the lake from the viewpoint which also doubles up as a picnic site. You can also camp at Lake Paradise, but we, we didn't get to do that. Game viewing in the park is not easy because of the thick forest. You'd have a better chance of seeing the animals at the craters. We made it to our accommodation for the night, Nomad Trail Hotel at around 6.45 p.m. We checked in, settled and refreshed ourselves just in time for buffet dinner. It's a very basic place with simple and switch rooms, but it worked. Day 2! We embarked on our journey to North Hall right after breakfast. We left at around 7.30 a.m. Shortly after, we made our way to Gulf Aredo Crater. We checked up a small hill to get to the crater and it was very windy. So much so that it feels as though you'll be swept away. I'm not joking. <laughs> the crater itself is big and beautiful.
from then on we continued with our journey and the landscape is very dusty and bare. There's not much to see other than pastoralists with their herds of camels and goats and dry laggards. Unfortunately, we didn't get to go to Chalbi Desert. We were informed that it had rained a couple of weeks prior to the trip. At this point, it was so hot. Everybody was exhausted. Nothing prepares you for how hot this place is. The drive from Kalata to North Hor is not long, but expect a very bumpy ride. We got to North Hor just in time for lunch at our home for the night. And here is a basic room tour of the traditional huts we'd be sleeping in. Bear in mind that accommodation here is very basic. After lunch, we headed for a much needed dip in the swim was so refreshing. Right after, we headed to the moving sand dunes of North Hall. I'm not gonna lie, I was quite disappointed on seeing the sand dune as I expected more than one dune for one and also it looked quite small but we quickly realized that it was huge once we climbed it. The dune itself is absolutely beautiful and the golden sun shimmered against the setting sun. We visited just in time for sunset and we caught a spectacular sunset. It was everything and more. The drive back to accommodation was so lovely with the beautiful dust colors in the sky and a magical moon drive. Day 3 started off early as it was going to be a very long day, traveling from North Hall through Loyangalani to Ngurunit. After a quick breakfast, we bid North Hall goodbye and kicked off the journey. Just like the journey to North Hall, it is hot and there's not much to see. As you drive further, you notice a change in vegetation and scenery. You transition from sandy landscapes to very rocky terrain. Fortunately, there's a proper road.
the smallest ethnic group in Kenya. There are boats on site that ferry people to and from. So the El Molo are the smallest tribe in the country. They are about 3,500 as of the last census. This is a result of the intermarriage with neighboring communities like the Samburu, Turkana, Rendile and Borana. The main economic activity of the El Molo is fishing and the women make and sell beaded jewelry and woven baskets. When you visit the community, be sure to bring donations. We checked up a small hill to get a bird's eye view of the place and the scenic view of Lake Turkana was a treat. We made our way back to the shore and on to our next stop for lunch, Layangalani town. Back to the car, continued with our journey. We stopped at the shopping center to stock up on drinks and headed to our next stop, which was the Lake Turkana Wind Power Project, which is a wind farm comprised of 365 wind turbines that generate electricity. We stopped to marvel at the size and scale of the project. As we continue on the journey, the road becomes bumpy and the scenery transitions to a cleaner environment dotted with very many hills and laggers. It feels as though you are passing through a valley surrounded by hills and it's absolutely beautiful. We finally made it to Ngurunit. We changed into our swimming gear and headed to the famous Durunit natural rock pools and water slides. The rock pools and slides are naturally formed and the water comes from the forest in the Ndoto mountains in the form of river Delawai. I was so excited. I had been looking forward to this activity in the most. The place is absolutely beautiful. It's everything I imagined and more. So there is a series of three pools. You get onto the first one, slide into a smaller pool and then slide into the big pool. Alternatively, you can just slide from the first pool straight into the biggest pool and it's completely safe. Sliding was very, very fun. You get to relieve your childhood memories. So we rushed back to the car and headed straight to the summer concert where we would spend the night, which was like less than 10 minutes away. We had some tea, which was a lovely surprise because it was getting quite chilly. Our bonfire was lit and we chatted the night away. Day 4!
The interesting thing about this campsite is that there are three choices of accommodation. You can either sleep in the rooms, maniatas, bandas or sleep in the tents. After a quick breakfast, we headed out for our last activity, quad biking. Quad biking is done at the lager next to the campsite, so we didn't have to leave the premises to enjoy the activity. I'd never quad biked before and I was very excited to do it. Steven, the owner, is a very patient instructor. I fell in love with Ngurunich, it's a cool and lush wonderland in the otherwise hot Marsabit, surrounded by tall rocky mountains and home to elephants and other, and other animals. We each enjoyed a round of biking and after that we said goodbye and started our journey back to Nairobi. Again the scenery started changing as we made our way to Lake Summit and this stretch of the road is very bumpy. Shortly after we joined the highway, the Great North Road and it was smooth sailing from there. Afterwards we made our way to Nanyuki for some lunch then drove straight to Nairobi. And that's it for this vlog you guys thank you so much for joining me i hope you enjoyed marsha beach is a beautiful beautiful place and i can't sing enough praises about the place it really did surprise me in the best way possible and i'm just so grateful and i really enjoyed it as usual i'm going to leave links to all the blog posts on this trip down in the description box below so please make sure you check that and make sure you subscribe for So like this blog, comment, share it with everyone, tell a friend to tell a friend and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe and bye!